Open up the Julia REPL and hit the right square bracket to go into the package mode. Then type add graphs space graph plot. Then all you have to do is to wait for the packages to be added to the Julia environments. The goal of Graphs package is to offer a performant platform for network and graph analysis in Julia. It can be considered the equivalent of Network X package in Python. Graphs package offers a set of simple concrete graph implementations, simple graph for undirected graphs, and simple dgraph for directed graphs. To support the endeavor of making Julia programming tutorials, do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And also, after watching the video, comment down below what you think about Julia Graphs package. Now it's time to use the using keyword to import the graphs and graph plot package. To define a graph using the graphs package, we have to use the graph data structure. Graph data structure allows us to actually represent an undirected graph. Here we are passing the number tree to actually specify the number of vertices in the graph. Then assigning the returned graph to the g1 variable. To make a triangular shaped graph, we can use the add edge function to add edges to the g1 graph. Here I'm adding an edge between the vertex number 1 and vertex number 2. Also, note that the add edge function will return true if an edge was added successfully, otherwise it will return false. You can also check out the examples provided by the library. It has a comprehensive set of examples, so you can learn how to use the functions. I'm also adding an edge between the vertex 1 and vertex 3 and vertex 2 and vertex 3. After defining the graph, it's time to actually use the graph plots gplot function to plot the graph. In order to do so, we pass the graph and node labels to the gplot function. To show you clearly what node labels do, first of all I do not pass the node labels to the gplot function and after that I will add the node labels so you can see what it does. Here is the plot of the g1 graph that we have already defined. Now if I add the keyword argument node label and add the labels, you will see that the nodes will be labeled 1 to 3. We can also construct the graph g1 by using an adjacency matrix. The rows and columns of the adjacency matrix represent the vertex numbers. For instance, if row 1 column 2 holds the value 1, it means that vertex number 1 is connected to vertex number 2. Otherwise, if it holds the value 0, it means that vertex number 1 is not connected to vertex number 2. So after defining the adjacency matrix, which is equivalent to the graph G1, we actually can pass the adjacency matrix to the graph data structure and define a graph G2. We can use the assert map to check whether the graph G1 is equivalent to graph G2. If the graph G1 is not equal to graph G2, the assert macro can return false. It is also possible to construct graph with the random edges. For instance, on line 23, I am defining a graph with 5 vertices and 5 edges. So if I run the code, the graph that is assigned to the variable G will be plotted by using the gplot function. Now if I change the number of edges to 6 and plot the graph, you'll see that the graph changes. Also, notice that graphs package checks the maximum number of edges for the given number of vertices and throws an error if this maximum is not respected. We can also define a random graph with 5 vertices and 10 edges, which is a random graph. After plotting this graph, you'll get a star-shaped graph. If I run the line 29 again and redefine this graph, I'll still get the star-shaped graph. It seems that the random graph with 5 vertices and 10 edges is only just this kind of shape. We can also define a directed graph by using the dgraph data structure. You can plot this directed graph by passing it to the gplot function. The directed graph also has arrows on its edges which shows and represents the direction in which the edges are connected to each other. You can also assign predefined graphs to a variable g by using the small graph function and passing the name of the graph that you're looking for. On line 37, I am iterating through a list that contains the name of predefined graphs. Then I'm plotting each of these graphs using the gplot function. We can also define click graph by using the click graph function. If you don't know what click graph is and the theory behind it, do not be scared. The graph theory is a vast subject and for a specific type of graphs, you can look up the definition on the web. I can also use the small graph function and pass the name of the predefined graph house to it. To plot this house graph, we can use the gplot function and pass the 
graph that we have already defined to it. You can see that the shape of the graph is like a house. To get the number of vertices of the graph G that we have already defined, we can use the MV function and to get the number of edges of a graph, we can use the NE function. We can also pass our graph to the gplot function with additional keyword arguments like node label, which will use the number of vertices for it, and edge label, and we can also define the color of the edge label that we are using to label our edges. Over here, for the first try, I removed the edge label color and plot the graph. As you can see, the edge labels are written in black color. And after that, I'll pass the edge label color as a keyword argument and define it to be the color blue. As you can see, obviously the edge label colors will change to the blue color. And if you are looking for passing an additional argument to the gplot function, please look up the documentation of the gplot function. You can also iterate through the number of vertices by using the vertices function and passing the g graph. And also you can iterate through the edges of the graph by using the edges function. And you can also use the src function which returns the source vertex of the edge e and for destination vertex for edge e you can use the dsd function. To get the adjacency matrix of a graph you can use the adjacency matrix function and pass the graph g to it. And to get the incidence matrix of a graph you can use the incidence matrix function and pass the graph g to it. The same holds for Laplacian matrix of a graph. Note that the matrix returned by the Laplacian matrix function is a sparse. You can also define a graph g and add the vertices and edges later by using the add vertices and add edge function. For instance, over here I add five vertices to the graph g and after that add the edges to the graph g by using the add edge function. For example, I add edges between between vertex 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 2, 4, 3, 4, 3, 5, and 4, 5. And after that, I will plot the graph G by using the gplot function and adding the labels by using the NV, which returns the number of vertices, and labels for edges by using the NE, which returns the number of edges. You can also add an additional vertex to the graph G by using the add vertex function and use the add edge function to add an edge between the vertex number 5 and number 6. By plotting the graph, you can see that the additional vertex that we have already added to the graph changes the structure of the graph. You can use rem underline vertex function to actually remove a vertex from the graph. After removing the vertex, we can plot the graph to show how it affects the structure of the graph. Obviously, in Julia, you can use emojis for the variable name. You can type these emojis by using the backslash and typing the name of your emoji and hitting tab. For instance, over here, I've defined a graph and added some edges to it and plotted the graph by passing the emoji, which is the name of the variable that contains the graph data structure that we've already defined. And I define another graph and call it a skeleton, which contains 11 vertices and several several edges are added to it by using the add edge function. Finally, I plot the Cartesian product of the two graphs by passing the two graphs, one of them is the emoji graph and the other one the skeleton graph to the Cartesian product function which returns a graph which is plotted by the gplot function. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to not lose future content on Julia programming language. And also let me know what you think about the graphs Julia package by commenting down below the video. As always, see you all later.